Hi guys, in this video I'm going to show you how to upgrade the stock 128GB SSD in this late 2012 13-inch MacBook Pro Retina to this Samsung 250GB 850EVOS SSD, so stay tuned. So I'm first off just going to give a brief history of the storage solutions I've come up with uh, prior to doing this upgrade. Um, if that's going to bore you and you just want to see how the upgrade works, I'll put a link in the description below that will just skip straight to the upgrade. Um, but essentially I bought this MacBook in mid-2013. Uh, it's the 128 gig model. Uh, and about a year in, I realised I should have probably have got the, the bigger model because 128 gig for what I do for Logic Pro and Final Cut is just it's just not enough space. So mid-2014, I had a look online to see what upgrade paths I could have to increase storage on this. Uh, and as ever, Apple wasn't that helpful. They didn't offer any kind of upgrade path or anything. And what makes it worse is Apple introduced this proprietary 17 and 7 pin connector on the hard drive so you can't just stick a standard M SATA hard drive in this it has to be with this special connector so um, I looked online and there were third parties that offered it so there's there was the uh, OWC Aura 6G um, and that came in uh, 128, 256, 512 and I think even a terabyte models um, but they were just way expensive and I just couldn't justify the cost at the time um, so the other option was to get one of these, which is um, it's an SS, uh, sorry it's an SD card, um, and it's a Transcend Jet Drive Lite. It's the 128 gig model, and essentially it's just a 128 gig SD card um, that's uh, got a certain form factor, and this is specifically for the 13 inch Retina MacBook Pro, um, so that it fits. Um, when you put it in, it actually it's completely flush to the, the MacBook. Um, and that, that was pretty good for a while and it did offer extra storage so I could move music, movies and documents to that. Um, but I also was running VMs on this and it was quite difficult because you need, I couldn't get the kind of throughput on an SD card as you can with an internal hard drive. So uh, yeah. I kind of left it as it was and just used external hard drives and copied off what I didn't need and just used and kept whatever I needed on the hard internal hard disk um, until a few weeks ago where I decided to revisit it and see if there was anything else that was on offer or anything that changed or even just take the punt and get one of these OWC SSDs um, and actually it, it took a little while for research but there seemed to be a few people that was talking about these cards that would convert the 17 and 7 pin Apple connector um, and would then present you with an MSATA connector so that you could just get any off the shelf MSATA SSD um, stick it in and uh, essentially would work on your MacBook and I thought this is amazing, let's find out where this is so I looked online and um, yeah, Amazon sure enough was selling it and this is one of them so this is essentially the card which has the 17 and 7 pin and it converts it to an MSATA connection. So uh, what I've done is I've bought a Samsung 850 EVO MSATA SSD, uh, and essentially I just need to take this out, um, pop it into this and screw it down to this board, and then this essentially just needs to be replaced by opening up the MacBook and swapping it out with the existing hard drive. So uh, let's give it a whirl. Okay, so onto the upgrade. So I've got my 17 and 7 pin connector board here to MSATA and I've got my MSATA SSD so I'm going to place the MSATA SSD into here I'm going to open the MacBook and, uh, and get it installed. So let's uh, run a little montage and we'll get that installed. Um, I make you aware that uh, so on MacBooks uh, and loads of other Apple devices, um, they use this pentalobe screw bit, um, which I didn't have, so I've had to buy this uh, this screwdriver set, which has loads of little bits to be handy for future. Um, but yeah, so I'm using the uh, 1.2mm bit to uh, undo these.
interesting. This is the battery connector. I'm just going to take the cover off here. Need a Torx for this, I think. Yes, yeah, three Torx screws. Let's just take these off. Okay, that one looks like it doesn't want to come out. Ah, there we go. It's kind of like a cover. Okay, that's cool. Okay, so I'm just going to bend this ever so slightly just so that it hovers over the top of the connector so I'm disconnecting the, the battery from the logic board. I need to lift this. It's the interposer and we'll ensure that the battery remains disconnected. So let's take the SSD up here. We best use a sludger tool here. Disconnect that there. So now that I've taken the adapter off here, I'm just going to unscrew the SSD from the existing mount. And I'll get my adapter here, slide this into here, just make sure that's firmly in, which it appears to be. So. I'll uh, screw this back and put everything back. Okay, so everything seems to be installed now. Um, we've got the old 128 gig SSD that came out of the MacBook. Um, you can actually buy, I've seen, and I'll, I'll probably end up getting one, is um, the opposite of the board I've just put in. So it actually has MSATA connectors on the outside and you can plug this Apple 17 and 7 pin in and use this hard drive as a standard MSATA drive. So I'll probably end up doing that either using it as an external drive or in another computer. So that's not going to waste, which is a good thing. Um, so all I need to do now is get um, Mac OS installed. So for those of you that haven't installed Mac OS from a USB drive before, essentially you need a USB drive at least 8GB in size that you don't mind wiping as the installer will overwrite anything on the USB drive. So you download that from the Mac App Store uh, and once downloaded you run a command on uh, the terminal window that will essentially copy the installer to the USB drive as I say, overwriting what's on the USB drive. And then that's bootable then from the Mac. So this all needs to be done before you uh, install the new hard drive. Or if you have a second Mac, then obviously you can do it from there. So once you're in a position to install, I've, like I've just done, you just need to insert the USB drive and hold down the Option or Alt key as you start the Mac. And this will give you the option to boot from the USB drive. So you select Install Mac OS Sierra and after a few minutes, this is a USB 2 drive, so it took a little longer, you'll be presented with this Mac OS utility screen. So the first thing we need to do is we need to prepare the new SSD for the install of Mac OS. We can't just start the Mac OS installation, otherwise the installer won't see the new SSD as a drive to install to. So we click on Disk Utility and we launch that. And we can see here under Internal that the new Samsung SSD 850 EVO is there, but it's currently uninitialized. So we need to click Erase. I will call this Mac OS. And we'll keep it with the default, so there's obviously a few different to, to choose from. But I'm just going to use Mac OS Extended Journaled and uh, a GUID partition. And click Erase. So once that's process complete, you can see this partition here now. And that's now ready to have the Mac OS install. So let's click install Mac OS. So once it's loaded, you'll get the install Mac OS Sierra. I click continue and I accept the license agreement. And you can now see that there's the Mac OS partition from a new SSD, so I can select that to be installed. And uh, we just wait for it to install. And then once complete, there's just one final step to make sure that trim is enabled in Mac OS Sierra. Um, so after this is installed or done, I'll cut back to this and I'll show you how to do that. 
Okay, so now that macOS is installed, I want to enable trim for the SSD. So I'll first just double check that trim isn't currently enabled. So if I go to the Apple logo, then go to About This Mac, and then go across to System Report, um, to SATA, SATA Express on the left hand side, and then choose Samsung SSD, um, and here I can see that trim support currently says no. So what I need to do now is, if I close this down, I uh, go to open a terminal window, and I need to run the following command, which is sudo trimforce enable. Uh, type in my password onto the Mac, just set up, and it'll now uh, basically ask me to confirm whether I wish to proceed, so I'll just click yes and enable. Your system will immediately reboot, is this okay? Yes. So macOS needs to be rebooted to enable trim, so I'll, uh, I'll let that do that now. And uh, we'll wait for it to reboot and then double check that trim has been enabled back in system report. Okay, so Mac has restarted and we'll now go back into system report again and just double check to see. Let's just close this terminal window here. It seems to have opened up after the reboot. Um, let's go to system report and then we'll go to SATA and check. Uh, and yes, trim support is now enabled, which is fantastic. So overall, I think the process went really well and I would definitely recommend this to anyone that wants to upgrade the storage in their MacBook. The process was relatively simple to do. It was just a case of swapping out the SSD and then reinstalling macOS from the USB drive. Um, and for anyone that already has like a time machine backup, it'll make the process of an upgrade even simpler. I've put links in the description below to the products that I bought, so the M SATA SSD and also to the board that's required to plug it into this MacBook. Uh, and I've also put links to one, the forum that I got uh, the information for the board from, and two, um, a link to create a USB bootable Mac OS installer for people that don't know how to do that. So thanks for watching. I hope it's been really useful to anyone that's considering an upgrade. Um, I definitely recommend it as I say. So thanks for watching.